name's Jason Lawrence. Um, uh, this is my uh, business partner, Avi Shalat, and uh, we um, have created Arcball, which is our company, and we're here unveiling our product, Arcball Spin. Uh, I'm Avi Shalat, we're both professors at University of Virginia, and we decided to start this company because uh, we found this uh, device, these iPhones, have amazing computers and amazing cameras, and that's opening really a world of possibility for computational photography and the type of things we're doing. Um, the list is long. Um, I think uh, doubt is probably one of the larger hurdles. You know, is this something that I can do? Do I have the right background? Do I have the right experience? Um, and sort of, you know, seeing that as a creative individual, as long as you're persistent, you can typically overcome those doubts. So I would say that's probably the greatest hurdle that I've faced in this adventure. Okay. That's self-doubt. You have to overcome that. You have to believe that what you're doing is fantastic. Uh, and that other people will see that same thing. Even when you receive criticism and all sorts of people, when you're doing something totally new and people can't put it into a category. Um, what has tripped us up? Uh, I mean, it's related to the last question, a number of things. Um, it, logistics, procedural aspects of starting a company, things that you don't really think of until you're presented with them, like, uh, what kind of tiles do we need on the floor and how are we going to have a right document management system and uh, a lot of these, these, these sort of important aspects of running any organization, um, some of those haven't been executed with perfect grace and precision, um, but again related to the persistence and the, uh, the notion that these things can't be overcome, you get through them. Um, so yeah, I would, I would probably say just sort of the the day-to-day -day operations of a company is something that's been new for me and it has presented a number of sort of daily hurdles. The same, devil is in the details. So uh, basically, uh, when you start a company, you have to do everything yourself at the start. And uh, so you have to learn very quickly and you have to be able to uh, learn from mistakes because you make them, and so. Uh, number one are people, one another. Uh, speaking for myself, uh, my business partner has been an incredible asset in terms of defining strategy and um, uh, discussing the, the concept of the product and bringing his own previous experiences to bear on what we're doing. That has been far and away the most important resource. And for any aspiring entrepreneur, my first piece of advice is to make sure that you're working with someone that you trust and respect and that you feel like is bringing to the table the same level of commitment and energy and talents that you yourself are. Um, not the same type of talents necessarily, but uh, talents in their own right. And, all the better if they complement yours and you can sort of, you know, complete a, a team. Um, that and also I should say, you know, we, part of this company is founded by the National Science Foundation. We got a grant through their Small Business Innovation Research Program. And so as a financial resource, that's been a very important uh, tool that otherwise we wouldn't be where we are today or as, as fast as we've gotten here. So that's uh, the other thing I want to add to that are, are, you know, people, specific people. Wherever you are in the world, you'll find people who have started startups. And typically, they're very nice, enthusiastic, intense people. So if you engage them, they'll most of the time happily give you lots of good advice. And we've, we've done that with lots of, uh, lots of other uh, startups in Charlottesville that we've talked to. They've been giving us great advice. And then here at South by Southwest, uh, anybody you ask, you know, how did you do this? How did you do that? Lots of people open up. Uh, and so engaging engaging people that you know and, and getting into a networks where uh, other people have started startups, you can ask them things and typically they'll help you. I think a lot of people when they start a company, they think that there's magic and you know, I don't know that I'm cut out to do this because I haven't done it or I haven't already proved that I'm successful and so I can understand there's a reluctance to initially engage people that are considered very successful business people, they've done this before, but they're often very willing to share. They want to share. It's something that's very natural and part of uh, an experience like this. In fact, I think that's probably one of, in my opinion, the most important um, goal of a conference is bringing people together and creating opportunities for interaction and discussion that otherwise wouldn't take place in our daily sort of isolated, distant lives. Yeah, I'll give you a little anecdote. Uh, in the last three days, we probably met like three people who have created between 100 million and billion dollar companies with exits and so forth. And when you go up to them, they are so unassuming and so humble. And it's amazing that these people are extremely successful titans, and yet they're willing to talk with you. I mean, they are people just like everybody else. And that's probably one of the reasons they've been successful. So for the successful entrepreneurs, continue to cultivate that sense of humility and recall that you were where they were one day. And that was probably one of the most exciting parts of the whole journey. Um, well, that's a good question. It's of course hard to say. Um, we've um, just unveiled a product and with that product we're trying to reach a mass market. And so um, what we hope is that the abyss is being 
overwhelmed with customers and working like demons to keep up with their um, expectations and, 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 and living up to their expectations and trying to react to the ways that they will use our product that we can't completely anticipate. We've got some great advice from successful business people that have said you'll, you'll aim over here and you'll wind up over there, so expect that. And uh, you know, you can only do so much as to anticipating exactly how customers and, and, and the public will engage with things that you've made. So I think Arbus is reacting to the way our product is, 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 is embraced and making sure we can deliver the very best experience um, at the best price and, and stay ahead of our competition. Um, the joy, I think, of doing something new, that's a very important part of it. Um, there's also been some individuals. I would, one person that comes to mind is Dean Gaiman, um, and someone that is uh, probably most well known for the Segway, that he's invented many, many things. And um, as soon as you meet him or interact with him or see a talk, you, you recognize right away the kind of intensity and joy and uh, intellectual rigor and creativity that he brings to what he does, and you can see how, how, how thrilling it is. And uh, I would like to think that I possess some of those similar talents, and I also certainly enjoy the process of doing something that I don't know exactly how it's going to work out, and I haven't figured out exactly the right answers, but that really is a thrilling experience, is figuring them out and having enough self-confidence to feel like you can. You'll make mistakes, you'll take a couple wrong turns, but in the end, um, persistence is really uh, undeniable. So I would say Dean Kamen has been a really um, yeah, point of light. So I agree with that. I, I, I'm 36 and I'm finally seeing the vision of my life. I want to create an environment where I can flourish you know, intellectually and sort of producing products and things that I really love to do. Uh, and so that's, that's really what's driving me because I think this opportunity is that. I, I love what I do. I wish I could spend every minute of the day uh, on this. And, and that's the finding something like that that you're really passionate about. Once you discover that, you should never let go. And I think uh, wherever, whenever it comes to you in your life, uh, you know, if you're lucky, it happens when you're 22. If you're not, uh, maybe later. But once you find it, you got to grab onto it. And, and that's, that's kind of what, uh, what's inspiring me, creating that environment that I see for myself to be and really happy and productive. And don't be afraid to fail. Part of that is sort of knowing that yeah, there's always risk. Um, but fail quickly. Fail fast, right, and get on to the next thing. Yeah. Who? Dean Kamen was one. <laughs> I'd say the scientist uh, in 18, uh, early 1820s, Carnot. He was the son of a general during France's like revolutionary period. Uh, and this guy was seeing all this innovation in England about this engine. Uh, and you know, he was unable in his context to make engines that compete, but he stood back and he found this amazing theorem which still guides the principle of engine design. This is a Carnot efficiency law. Uh, and that sort, of, that sort of ability to find what you're really great at and sort of change the world in that way, that has always been inspiring to me. So look it up on Wikipedia, Carnot, C-A-R-N-O-T. I can't compete with that. I'll stick with Dean Kamen. <laughs>